But the most ridiculous thing to me is to see women who have made the male gaze their best friend so much so that they cannot separate the two. They cannot separate what is really them and what is internalized misogyny, what is male gaze, whatever. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Kira, subscribe if you're new, and without further ado, let's get into today's video. Today, I'm talking about the plastic surgery debate because I'm gonna go ahead and say that I really do think I have contributed a lot to this conversation via TikTok. Um, and it's it's so fun to see like things that I've said kind of become things that people reference like when they talk about it. But um, it kind of just made me feel like I should probably make a full YouTube video on this because like I talk about it on TikTok and people are really interested in this. So I thought I would just make a nice long form video where we can hash it out here. So when I refer to the plastic surgery debate, a lot of what this debate, this ongoing debate <laughs> is about is like a lot of women want to make plastic surgery feminist and I don't know who needs to tell you to stop trying to make fetch happen, but that just is not going to happen. And I think why women get so mad at me when I say that plastic surgery isn't feminist is because they think that I'm saying if something isn't feminist, then you're a bad person and you suck as a woman. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> Here's what I'll say. I understand that getting plastic surgery may make your experience within the patriarchy more comfortable and easier and smoother. And that is not your fault, right? And you wanting to have a more pleasant experience within the patriarchy is also not your fault. It's not your fault that there's a patriarchy. It's not your fault that we live in it, right? So I don't have the right to fully judge people who get plastic surgery if it's gonna make their experience easier within this messed up world that we live in. I understand that. However, what I'm not going to do is pretend that something is feminist just to make people feel better. Right? Because for me, here's where I'm at, because I know a lot of people get very confused when I speak about their stuff. They're like, what is the point? What is your point? Why are you tearing down women? I'm not tearing down women. I'm su simply suggesting that we acknowledge where our actions are coming from, because the scariest thing to me and what I think is the worst thing in the world is to be doing things and not knowing why you're doing them and thinking that you're doing something because you feel that it's empowering and it's feminist and whatever and not actually acknowledging all of the things that are really going on and as to why you may have taken that course of action. I just think we all need to be 110% honest with ourselves about why we're doing things and what is the internal motivation? Is there internalized misogyny? Is there internalized male gaze? And if there is, and you wanna stick, and you, you still wanna do that, then that's fine, right? If you can recognize, yeah, I'm doing this because of the male gaze that I've internalized my whole life and that I now look at myself in the mirror as, and I can't stand to look at myself in a certain way and I wanna change it, that's fine. Because you know where it's coming from. But the most ridiculous thing to me is to see women who have made the male gaze their best friend so much so that they cannot separate the two. They cannot separate what is really them and what is internalized misogyny, what is male gaze, whatever. They can't separate those things. And then so they do act, they act out in ways that they call empowering. And that is the saddest thing to me, to see somebody who feels empowered but really doesn't know what's going on inside them. So that's why I think it's important to have these conversations. So when it comes to plastic surgery, I do have a TikTok called Aliens Don't Get BBLs, which I think is an amazing title. Um, and I won't post it here. I won't paste it here. I'll, I'll just say what I said in the TikTok, which is if you were in, because a lot of times when women speak about these things, they, they do what I like to call void talk. And it's not just women who do this. Plenty of people do something I call void talk, which is they take a certain situation or scenario or action, they put it in a vacuum, like a complete void, and then they assess it. And I'm like, okay, but uh, it's not in a void. It's not in a vacuum. It's in society, this system, right? So we can't always 
pretend that things exist in a vacuum and then be like, yeah, I'm empowered. But for this situation, what I thought I would do is pretend, pretend we're in a vacuum, right? Pretend you're in outer space. Pretend you're on a planet all by yourself. Just you, alone. Are you getting lip fillers? No, you're not. The answer is no. <laughs> Are you getting a BBL? If you live in outer space, on a planet by yourself, are you getting a BBL? No, the answer is no, because when you do remove yourself from society, when you, when you picture yourself as being removed from society, do you picture yourself gaining anything from having a bigger butt, gaining anything from having fuller lips, gaining anything from being closer to the ideal beauty standard, which is completely informed by white supremacy and the male gaze. Would you want those things? Would you feel so attached to those things in the way that we do here? No, you wouldn't. So what does that tell you? That's not you, baby. That's not you doing those things. That's not you who wants to look like that. That's not you who feels the need to look like that. That is something you have taken on. You have been indoctrined. You have been indoctrined to believe that you are more valuable in a different form, right? And I'm suggesting you, you look at it. Look at the indoctrination and say, do I like this? Is this me? Is this me doing this who wants to do this? Or is this something that I have ingested for so long and so consistently that it's very difficult for me to separate myself from this idea. And I just feel like women aren't asking themselves enough questions when they do things personally, but you can't, you can't make plastic surgery feminist because for several reasons, let's go to the Kardashians. Let's start talking about the Kardashians. So I have very mixed feelings on the Kardashians. I think they do good things. I think they do bad things. I think, you know, I, and so does everybody, right? So does everybody. So don't take this as like a, I hate the Kardashians. That's not what this is. But I do think they're a great example because, okay, Kylie Jenner has built an empire off really her lips and makeup and cosmetics. Why did she get lip fillers? She got lip fillers because a boy in high school told her her lips were too small. Right? So we know that it comes from an insecurity, even though people on the internet are gonna try and make you think otherwise, whatever. We understand that a lot of times these enhancements to people's bodies come from insecurity. We can recognize that. But then once somebody starts saying, oh, male gaze, people get offended and people think I'm attacking women. And it's like, well, if somebody literally got lip fillers because a man told her her lips were too small, that is literally the male gaze in action. Like that is cause and effect. Male gazed, woman changed, right? So we know that. Um, and the Kardashians have kind of been a very essential element in this culture that's been created of you know, the, the Kardashian body, the BBLs and the fake boobs and the lip fillers and the whatever else they get done, right? And that is not 100% their fault because they are not the only ones doing that. They are kind of just like the, what's it called, archetype? But there are so many influencers around them, like both in their circles and not in their circles that make their bodies look the exact same as them. Right. And then that is where it's like, OK, this is a culture now, because if it's just one family doing something, whatever. But once it starts to be that family and all of their friends and all of their friends, friends, and they all go to the same surgeon and they all look exactly the same. And especially when they're not being transparent about it, you can't deny that's going to mess up not just young girls brains, not just young, impressionable girls brains, all of our brains, all of our brains. And I am being completely honest when I tell you there have been so many people on social media that I have followed and not realized that their bodies weren't real. And I was comparing myself to that image 
and being like, oh yeah, like I wish I had a butt like that, whatever, whatever. Come to find out these butts are fake. So for the people who say like, oh, you should be able to tell the difference. The surgeon's job is so that you cannot tell the difference. And that cannot be on me. That cannot be my responsibility to identify who has a real ass and who has a fake ass, who has a real boobs, who has fake boobs, who has real lips, who has fake lips. That cannot, that responsibility cannot fall on me as the view, like people on the internet are really suggesting that that is our responsibility. It simply isn't. You can't always tell, like you can't always tell. And that means that they've done a good job. So I think that's a ridiculous thought that has been put out there. That's our responsibility to tell the difference. No, but you cannot deny that this culture has created, it's made it very, very difficult for women and young girls to feel okay about themselves because it's almost the norm now for women who have money to have like not real bodies. And I don't mean like, obviously <laughs> not all women are on social media, not all rich women are on social media, but the, the successful women that you can think of and like the social media stars, the influencers that you follow, when you really think of them, for me, most of them have some kind of work done, especially the ones that are white, right? Um, but also the ones who are not white, also the, a lot of black women too. And it's created this culture, you know, BBL culture and like the BBL effect and like those things are funny, but I personally think it's sad that people, you know, on TikTok, somebody showed a video of like a bunch of girls in an airport in Florida, like 18 year old girls all in wheelchairs because they've all just gotten BBLs. That's when I personally think it becomes obvious what we're doing. It becomes obvious that this is not feminist because feminism is supposed to leave women in a better spot. Do people understand this? Feminism is not just doing whatever you want and calling it empowering. Feminism is supposed to leave women as a whole in a better spot than before. Do you think, no, I'm asking you right now. I'm literally asking you right now to answer this to yourself, journal about it, something. If you walked into an airport in Florida filled with 18 year old girls in wheelchairs because they had just gotten plastic surgery and put it in their butt, would you call that empowering? Does that seem empowering? Does that seem like feminism to you? Because according to so many women on the internet, that's feminism. Feminism needs to be a little bit smarter, in my opinion. Feminism needs to have a little bit more critical thinking, in my opinion. Feminism needs to have some forethought, in my opinion. But choice feminism wants feminism to be whatever you feel like doing that day. And I don't know if you've noticed, but whatever you feel like doing that day might not be good for you. <laughs> like part of growing up is realizing a lot of the things that we do and feel that we need to do or that are our habits or things that we learn growing up from our parents, all of these things are not necessarily good for us just because we want to do them because there's a million and ten reasons to motivate you to do something and a lot of them are not good or true or right so i think we just need to reel that in a little bit <laughs> we need to reel that in a little bit and put a little bit more critical thinking in our feminist recipe because 18 year olds should not be getting BBLs. Your body hasn't even gotten close to finishing <laughs> developing yet. I haven't even gotten to the class conversation of this argument. I haven't even gotten there yet. And it's already super not feminist, but moving forward. Okay. So say we all want to get BBLs. Say we all want to get plastic surgery. Do you know what you need to get a BBL? Some money. Do you know what not all women have? Money. So when like, it is just so crazy to me the way people talk about plastic surgery as if it's like equal access. And if it's like good for women, I'm like, you realize it's crazy expensive. So you're creating a greater divide in the beauty gap, you have, you know, recognize that you're uncomfortable in your experience within the patriarchy. You said, okay, I'm going to use my money to make my experience more comfortable. Now you're over here. What about these women? 
What about these women who do not have the funds to get the BBL? We don't care about them, right? But plastic surgery is feminist. Give me a fucking break. Um, we don't care about these women. If, if you're leaving these women behind, right? And you're creating a bigger beauty gap, you understand that these women have no shot at looking like this beauty standard that you are not only subscribing to, but perpetuating. You know that. You don't care. You don't care. You don't care where you're leaving those women. So don't, don't come to me with this is feminist. Don't come to me with that. Because the thing is, what you need to understand is it is not necessary to be 100% feminist 100% of the time. It's actually pretty impossible <laughs> to be 100% feminist 100% of the time. There's things I do that aren't feminist sometimes, you know what I mean? But we do need to acknowledge that and we can't pretend that something is feminist when it's literally perpetuating a culture that is harmful to women, both psychologically and physically. 18 year old women are putting themselves, are putting themselves in physical danger to subscribe to this body trend that will go out of style when they're 26. I just think it's sad to see women pretending that that is empowerment because that's really forced action. Like it's really forced action. You are so uncomfortable with your current experience within the patriarchy that you wanna do something to change it and that you have every right to do that. You have every right to do that, but acknowledge that that is like a forced action. You know what I mean? Cause if you were, again, if you were in a planet all your own, you wouldn't be doing that. And I think it's crazy to call like a forced action empowerment. I just think that's really like, ooh, let's not lie. Let's not lie to ourselves. And people get mad at me for suggesting we don't lie to ourselves. I understand. It probably feels a lot better to be doing the things that are coming from, you know, patriarchal ideas and male gaze and internalized misogyny. I'm sure it feels a lot better to slap an empowerment title on it. It's a lie though. I'm sure it feels good, but you're lying. <laughs> you're lying to yourself. I don't like lying to myself. I also think that there's levels to this, you know what I mean? Because like, I think it's obviously, I'm, uh, I can't even imagine how difficult it is to be like an elderly woman in this society and like try to feel beautiful because of how terrible society makes older women feel about themselves, right? And again, that then plastic surgery is still a forced action because that's cause and effect, but that's super understandable. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, when you're 18, you need to fight it off a little better, in my opinion. In my opinion, you need to fight for yourself a little better because I just think it's really sad to see like very, very, very young, beautiful women already feeling so that the BBL is so compulsory to, to feeling beautiful and having an experience where you feel beautiful. Like, because you have to understand these things do not exist in a vacuum. And like, it's not a coincidence that when you go on Instagram, you scroll and you see influencers with BBLs. And then when you go to the airport, you see 18 year olds with BBLs. That is cause and effect. And that's why I'm saying this is a forced action. This is not empowerment. This is not feminism. We can see A caused B. And I think, I think it's really, it, that's why it's like, I do think this culture deserves a critique because I do think it's stoppable. And I do think that a lot of the young girls with BBLs did not need to have those. And I do think that social media had a lot to do with it. And it's cause and effect. And people want to ignore cause and effect and say, no, it's just empowerment. And I just think that's dumb. I just think that's dumb. And I think that's unaware. I think we're not thinking properly. But just a, another disclaimer, like I'm not saying women shouldn't get plastic surgery. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I think it's a little ridiculous for 18 year olds to be getting BBLs, especially in mass amounts of them. And I also think it's a little ridiculous to call it feminism and to call it empowering. Because to me, it seems like a forced action. It seems like you, you know, you didn't feel pretty and welcome in this society in your body. And so the effect of that is you chose to do something about it because you had the money. 
But that's not feminism. That's not empowerment. Do you know what I mean? That is a response to the patriarchy. And that's a valid response to the patriarchy. But I don't think it's the only possible response. I don't think it's the only way. Um, and I do think it could be challenged and I do think it can be critiqued, but I understand the status quo is the status quo and it will remain the status quo for probably a while now, right? So I understand that people are going to feel the need to get it for a while. And I don't know, maybe when I'm older, I'm going to feel the need to get it, right? Because I'm sure there is a wall, the way this society treats women in, in addition to older people, and then how society treats specifically older women, that seems like a really th difficult thing to navigate. And I'm not there yet, right? So I'm not speaking and saying I would be strong enough in my identity or whatever to resist all kinds of plastic surgery in the future. I'm not even saying that, right? But if that were to happen, if I were to ever get it, I'm going to acknowledge that it's a forced action. I'm going to acknowledge that I don't feel good in my body in this society right now. And that is causing me to change my body. I'm not going to slap an empowerment or feminism label on it because really I'm acting out of powerlessness. And I would just rather know that. I would rather acknowledge that and be honest with myself because then we can be real. And then we can know what we're doing. And then we know where we stand. Does that make sense? Rather than putting on rose colored glasses and saying, everything's fine. I'm a empowered woman. We just need to be honest sometimes. That is also not to say that women with plastic surgery cannot be powerful or feel empowered. I just would stray away from saying plastic surgery is the reason you're empowered. Do you know what I mean? Just false narratives circulating around that I think personally won't help anybody. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say on that. I would love to start a discussion in the comments. I'm sure you all have lots to say and I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with me and that's okay. That's okay. But yeah, feel free to drop your comments down below and what you think about this conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you know when I post and subscribe to me on Patreon, follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to get to 10K so I can do swipe ups. And yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye.